Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Cody Blois, je suis le député de King's Hands euh, en Nouvelle-Écosse et je suis là aujourd'hui avec euh, quelques collègues et aussi la partie prenante qui sont en faveur d'avancer un programme euh, d'alimentation à l'école nationale. And uh, I'm here today uh, basically to help provide a space for, uh, first and foremost, our stakeholders who want to help advance a national food and school program, but also some colleagues uh, that I know who are also in favor. Uh, so I'm not going to take very long, but I would like to recognize uh, who will be speaking today. Uh, from the Coalition for Healthy School Food, we have Carolyn Webb and Heather Norris. So thank you for being here today. And we have Manuel Arango, who is uh, the Heart and Stroke Foundation. So great to have you with us. Uh, to my left. I have colleagues uh, Emanuela Lambropoulos, I have Ryan Turnbull and Serge Cormier. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm the Member of Parliament for King's Hands in the beautiful Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia. And part of the reason why I wanted to help give some space to the conversation around a national food and school program uh, is in particular because of the agriculture community that I represent in King's Hands. Uh, we have the greatest concentration of farmers uh, east of Quebec. And this is a conversation that's happening a lot in my communities. When I go to schools, you talk to principals, the number one thing that they're concerned about is ensuring that there is good quality quality food for students, particularly those students who are disadvantaged. And there has been work happening across the country, uh, but now the work has to focus on what can we do nationally to help uh, coalesce the work at the provincial program to make sure that we can have a program across the country. I think it's good for kids in school, it's good as an affordability measure, but if we make sure this program is construed the right way with some national leadership, we can ensure it's really good for local farmers, uh, particularly in the horticulture and fruit growing sector as well. So I, I told my constituents at home, I'd be happy to give the voice and the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I unfortunately can't stay for the entirety of the press conference, but I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Serge Cormier, who has actually introduced a private member's bill um, that we'll be calling on a framework to establish exactly what we're talking about today. Serge, over to you. Merci, Cody. Uh, merci tout le monde ici. Serge Cormier, député fédéral de la uh, First of all, thanks to, to my colleagues that are here this morning, uh, supporting a, a great initiative that I have, but also to those, uh, all those stakeholders that are here with us today uh, to make sure that, you know, we'll move forward uh, on creating uh, such a growth program that will help children and family throughout the country. Um, cette idée, même si c'est moi qui la présente en Chambre de commune comme uh, initiative parlementaire, plusieurs groupes depuis plusieurs années demandent d'avoir un programme comme celui-là. Uh, comme vous, en, vous savez probablement, on est un des seuls pays de G, du G7 à ne pas avoir uh, un, un programme de, 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 comme celui-là. Et puis, je pense qu'il faut uh, avancer dans ce sens avec tous les programmes sociaux que notre gouvernement a créés. C'est une continuité, si on pourrait dire. Uh, alors, um, that being said, uh, yes, my bill is to create a framework to establish a national food, school food program. Uh, I think we all know that this is provincial jurisdiction. By the end of the day, there should be no jurisdiction when we talk about school, when we talk about kids and school. We should all work together to make sure that we create this kind of program. And you know, when I uh, first went in 2015, many idea comes to my head uh, of what I will do if I will put forward a private member's bill. And I think this one always stuck with me. Why? Well, I have kids, I have three kids. And also, uh, You know, in the past when I was at school, even back when I was in first grade in 1980 something, back then kids, you know, they didn't have anything to eat at school, back then. So imagine now some, some kids still don't have anything to eat at school. And I think that, you know, having a program like that will make sure that those kids will not go hungry anymore. And Cody talked about, you know, the agriculture uh, sector or agriculture farmer that you have in his riding. I also have somebody, I also have fishers in my riding that can, that can provide those type of good food that we need in school. And when you listen to all the stakeholder group that are on stage with us and others in the country, they all also said that we need to have a school food program like that, but a, a school food that have healthy food for, for sure, but that don't, um, Stigmatize is the good word. Like all the the kids, it should be it should be uh, available to all the, school, the the kids in school. And this is what I want to do. And if I take the example of my province in New Brunswick, some school have some program, some don't. Some are funded by the government of, of the province of New Brunswick. Some are not, and they have to raise money on their own. 
And, uh, you know, we should have a uniform program throughout this co the, the, the country. And this is why we need to have some talk to the, with the province and territory. But on top of that, I think like all of those groups that are doing wonderful work in each of our provinces and territory need some support also. Uh, the perfect example I'm going to use, and I'm going to close on that, I'm going to let the, the, the stakeholders on stage here talk about the, the, uh, what they want us to do as, as a government, but also uh, uh, what we need to do to establish a program quick, as quick as we can, is this, is this story. Like at the school of my children, there's a guy that the, the, the called Racine Leger, is a small farmer uh, doing some li little like farming things in his own land, but the school provide him a piece of land. Since the last three years, is, he is like, you know, harvesting all those vegetables, but the kids at school help him uh, plant those vegetables, they harvest them, and they provide the food, the, the, those vegetables to the cafeteria at the school, and they make all the meals. This is the perfect example of having such kind of program that we can have the children take part in this wonderful uh, uh, initiative. So, moi, ce que je veux dire, c'est que mon initiative parlementaire, je pense que ça fait réaliser beaucoup de gens qu'on a besoin le plus rapidement possible encore une fois d'un programme comme celui-là. Et euh, les intervenants dans ma communauté euh, demandent euh, qu'on qu qu se penche sur ce problème le plus vite possible. Trop d'enfants en vont à l'école le ventre vide. Ce n'est pas bon pour leurs éducations. On doit faire en sorte d'avoir un programme comme celui-là pour eux, pour leur famille, pour les aider à surmonter les difficultés qu'ils ont dans la société, dans la vie quotidienne, mais aussi uh, pour les aider à atteindre leur plein potentiel. Alors, on that, uh, I will let all those great stakeholders uh, talk. I have, can, can say more uh, on my private member's bill, but I hope it's going to move forward. But I also hope, like you know, that the, uh, our government will, will take action on that. Uh, we are there. We, we, we know that, you know, we, we need a program like that. So uh, I thank all the stakeholders uh, stakeholder again uh, for uh, their uh, wonderful advocacy on that. So thank you very much. And uh, the floor is... Uh, Emmanuel might want to say... Emmanuel that. also uh, will say a few words. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, uh, Manuel Lombropoulos from Saint Laurent. And um, I'm very, very happy to be supporting this private member's bill. It was actually uh, something I had introduced myself in 2021, but then we went into elections. And I'm very, very happy that my colleague Serge Cormier took it over and was able to make it happen. And, and I see that there's a lot of support from within our party. So I'm really happy about that. The reason why it's such an important bill is because um, well, kids, a lot of kids go to school and they don't have food. Some of them don't eat breakfast, they don't eat lunch, and who knows what they're eating at home. And we know that families are are having a hard time right now, even putting the f putting food on the table. It's uh, It's been difficult. So in order to kind of alleviate the situation and relieve them of that, we're coming in and we're hoping to eventually be able to implement a national school food program. Qu'est-ce que ça va faire? Ben, ça va donner de la nourriture à tous nos enfants euh, à leur école. Et puis, c'est pas pour seulement les, les, les enfants qui viennent de familles qui n'ont pas, pas assez d'argent pour euh, leur donner need un lunch, mais c'est pour tous les enfants parce qu'on essaie de ne pas stigmatiser les jeunes. Et c'est clair que si on offre de la nourriture seulement aux enfants qui en ont besoin, ben on, on, a, on, on va voir un très clair, une très claire différence entre les enfants et ils vont être stigmatisés. Donc, uh, it's really important that children eat the right nutritious foods in order to succeed in school. As a teacher, a former teacher, um, I can say that I saw a very big difference when my children were not eating, the ones who were coming from uh, families that maybe weren't able to afford the same foods as other kids were doing a little bit worse in their classes and in, and in their educational, uh, in, in their education. Um, and, you know, it has an effect on the attention span. Ch children are, are not thinking about what they're learning when they have an empty stomach and when they're hungry. They're only thinking about what they're going to be eating and when. So it's a really great initiative. It's something that will help us um, make this country a fairer place for everyone. And it'll help us give all kids the same opportunities. And that's what's really important in this. And so I'm really, really 
grateful to uh, to these extraordinary groups that have been fighting for this for a very, very long time, and to my colleague Serge and my other colleagues in the House who have been supportive of this as well, who are helping to make this happen. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Ryan Turnbull, Member of Parliament for Whitby. And uh, so for far too long, we've witnessed the harsh reality of hunger casting a shadow over the potential of children. And unfortunately, the number of food insecure households and children has risen uh, due to the current cost of living challenges that Canadians are facing. And this is why I believe now is the time to implement a national school food program in Canada. I've been advocating for a national school food program for many years, uh, long before I was elected. But I want to acknowledge the exceptional hard work uh, and dedication of the members of the Coalition for Healthy School Food. Uh, in particular, I know I've worked for quite a number of years with Carolyn Webb, uh, Manny, uh, and Debbie Field, who's not here today, but uh, they've been uh, sources of advocacy at the national level and have worked tirelessly for many years in order to get to this point today, which is I think we're advancing forward on building a national school food program, obviously, uh, Serge Cormier's private members bill is an, another major step uh, with a framework, developing a framework, which I think is an important step forward. Um, but I just want to really acknowledge the hard work, Heather yourself as well, uh, that the coalition has played in the national advocacy efforts. And the coalition has been strong, but has gotten stronger, I think, over the years. So I'm proud of the work that we've done together uh, to get a commitment uh, in, a federal, of a federal investment in the last election platform. My caucus colleagues have been active on this for years. Julie de Bruyssen, Cody Bloy, Serge Cormier, er Eric Kizmerchek, Pam Damoff, Emanuela, uh, Nate Erskine-Smith, Mark Gerritsen, Tony Van Bynen, and many, many others. Together, we've written letters and raised our voices on this consistently for years. And I personally, personally remain very hopeful that our continued advocacy will realize a truly national school food program in Canada. A national school food program would be another advancement in supports for families, following our government's investment in the Canada Child Benefit, in a national early learning and child care program, dental care, and now pharmacare. We cannot ignore the undeniable truth that food insecurity impedes the learning process, stifles potential, and perpetuates the cycle of poverty. No child should ever be forced to face the day on an empty stomach. It is fun a fundamental right that every, children or every child deserves access to adequate nutrition, and we must choose to invest in our future, to sow the seeds of prosperity, and to ensure that every child has an equal opportunity to thrive. The implementation of a national school food program is not merely an act of goodwill. It is an investment in a future where every child has the nourishment they need to succeed. I'm acutely aware of the challenges. There are many that lie ahead. The differences in provincial programs, logistical hurdles, budgetary constraints, and many others. However, let's not be deterred. Look at how far we've come already. Uh, and so I think we need to continue, and that's why I'm here today to show my support. Instead, let us stand united in our collective resolve to ensure that no child goes hungry and that no potential goes unrealized. Together, let us build a future where every child can rise and shine. Thanks. So I want to just uh, say, Carolyn, maybe you could come up first and speak to the Coalition for Healthy School Food. And thank you again for all your tireless advocacy. Thank you, Ryan and everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to be there, here. So good morning. My name is Carolyn Webb, and I work with the Coalition for Healthy School Food, Canada's largest school food network. I'd like to start by thanking the federal government for their leadership on this issue, for committing $1 billion over five years in their platform, for consulting with Canadians, and for working towards a strong national food policy. I'd now like to urge the government to make the first ever federal investment in a national school food program in budget 2024. This visionary initiative would build on their important investments in families, including the early learning and child care agreements and the Canada Child Benefit. La Coalition pour une saine alimentation scolaire compte plus de 400 organisations membres et sympathisantes de toutes les provinces et territoires. Toutes sont convaincues qu'il est temps de mettre en place un programme d'alimentation scolaire pan-canadien. Nous, um, nous savons tous que les familles du pays sont en difficulté, bien qu'entre 20 et 40 des élèves du pays aient accès à un repas ou à une collation à l'école. Les budgets des programmes d'alimentation scolaire sont serrés. Il n'y a, euh, a tout simplement pas assez de programmes 
ou d'argent pour répondre aux besoins. Toutefois, il existe une formidable opportunité d'investir dans un programme fédéral d'alimentation scolaire qui apporterait un soutien solide aux familles de tous les pays. A national school food program would be great for families. A recent report by Dr. Amberly Roots and colleagues suggests that families could save between $130 to $190 per child per month during the school year if those students were served breakfast and lunch at school. A national school food program would be great for women. A Swedish study found that mothers' labor force participation increased by 5% thanks to the implementation of a national school food program. It would be great for children and youth. School food programs increase children's consumption of healthy foods. They benefit children's lifelong eating patterns, and they reduce students' risks of chronic disease. The Swedish study I mentioned showed that students that participated in a school food program throughout their schooling had up to a 5.8% increase, increase in lifetime earnings, with the largest impacts on students whose families had the lowest incomes. A national school food program would also be good for local producers and communities. If a program supported appropriate local food targets, schools could become a more stable and predictable markets for farmer, farmers and other food providers. School food programs can also create a significant number of jobs for food service workers. Grâce à des récentes augmentations, les gouvernements provinciaux, territoriaux et municipaux fournissent envi uh, aujourd'hui environ 280 millions de dollars par an um, pour des programmes d'alimentation scolaire. Nous demandons au gouvernement fédéral de compléter ce financement en fournissant les 200 millions de dollars par an qu'il s'est engagé à fournir. Cela permettrait aux provinces et aux territoires, ainsi qu'aux communautés autochtones, d'étendre leur programme et de servir de manière cohérente des aliments plus sains à un plus grand nombre d'enfants et de jeunes qui ont, euh, eu, en ont besoin. Au gouvernement du Canada, nous vous invitons à tirer parti de vos euh, réussites dans le cadre des accords sur l'apprentissage et la garde des jeunes enfants, de l'allocation euh, canadienne pour enfants et d'autres programmes sociaux et de soutien. Les provinces et les euh, territoires, les municipalités, les dirigeants autochtones, les organisations, les partenaires communautaires, les fournisseurs alimentaires, les écoles et les familles sont prêts à co collaborer avec vous. We've all heard that Canada is the only G7 country and one of the only industrialized countries without a national school food program. Countries all around the world know that school food programs have significant benefits. In fact, research has shown that for every dollar put into a school food program, the return on investment is around two and a half to seven times. We're urging the federal government to continue to show its leadership and increase support for families at this time. We know this investment will be tremendously popular with Canadians, and so many people and organizations will be ready to support implementation. We believe that there is no other initiative that the federal government could take that would, for the money spent, have as big an impact on supporting food affordability and helping families than investing in a national school food program in Budget 2024. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Heather Norris. I'm the president and CEO at the Ottawa Network for Education. We are a member of the Coalition for Healthy School Food. At the Ottawa Network for Education, we're a charitable organization that for close to 40 years has been working with the four public school boards in Ottawa to offer necessary programs in English and French that support student well-being and success. For over 30 years, we have been running the school breakfast program at Ottawa schools. For many, many years, we served 13,500 meals every school day. We're now serving over 17,000 meals. This is a 28% increase in students daily compared to pre-COVID. We traditionally used to onboard two schools every school year. This year, we've already onboarded nine to 10 new schools and applications are coming in for the next school year. It's an unprecedented time. We are challenged to meet the growing demand while working within our current financial means. Federal funding is needed now more than ever to support nutrition, infrastructure, and resourcing needs. Public schools were not purpose-built for food security programs, and with the current system, Teachers, principals, school staff, and volunteers support food preparation and delivery every day when their focus should be on teaching. We need to expand the amount of time students have to eat. We need appropriate facilities and staffing to prepare, store, and serve food. 
We're asking and encouraging the federal government to build on their leadership to date and to meet their platform commitment in budget 2024 and invest in a national school food program. A nutritious meal is a launch pad for a full day of focused learning. With federal government support, this will help us fuel kids and ignite learning every school day. Thank you. Hello, my name is Manuel Arango. I'm responsible for policy and advocacy at Heart and Stroke, and our organization is also a member of the School of Food Coalition. So it's a pleasure to be here today to speak to the importance of helping to prevent hunger and promoting healthy eating amongst our kids. A national school nutrition program can play a role in addressing these two goals. I would like to thank, of course, the four MPs that were here today, as well as other MPs that have been very supportive of this issue over the years. We know that unhealthy diets through the inadequate consumption of fruits and vegetables and overconsumptions of ultra-processed foods is something we ur urgently need to tackle in this country. Uh, poor nutrition impacts heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, cancer, and other chronic diseases. In Canada, only one-third of kids eat five or, or, or more servings of uh, vegetables and fruit daily. Uh, this is a real problem, and it gets worse as kids get older, as they go into high school. Uh, so the reality is that families do struggle to feed their children um, healthy, minimally processed foods uh, for a variety of reasons, including um, limited family budgets, working long hours, etc. Evidence shows that school programs help to produce uh, better health and ed educational outcomes. And we know that increased consumption of healthy foods can reduce the risk of chronic disease. And we also know that school food programs help with increasing graduation rates, reducing hunger in classrooms, which is a known barrier to learning and concentration. Uh, also, a uh, national school program, uh, nutrition program, can help to educate our kids on the value of local agriculture and the important role local farmers play in supporting healthy diets. So the federal government did commit in its election platform in 2021 to a um, billion dollars in funding over five years. And in a couple of recent mandate letters for two ministers, um, there was a reference to, the, uh, to a school nutrition program. So Heart and Stroke urges the federal government to move forward with these uh, critical commitments for a school nutrition program um, with funding of 200 million per year over five years. And this program should be implemented in conjunction with, uh, the feder uh, with provinces, territories, as well as Indigenous communities. So we think the time to act is now, and we encourage the federal government to move ahead uh, in the upcoming budget with an investment on, on this program. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now go to the question program. Hi, uh, my name is Tessie Sanchi. I cover health for Hill Times Publishing. My first question will be to MP Cormier. Um, Mr. Cormier, when you presented your private member's bill, the your government, the Liberal government, had already started consultation process mm -hmm. for um, the national food, food policy that they promised in election 2021. Um, private member's bill slots are very precious. Well, you, you explained why this issue is important to you, but why go ahead with the issue when the government had already started on that work? Well, why, what was your message in doing that? Well, first, first of all, it's, it's normal that sometime, you know, government initiative and PMB crisscross each other. Like, look, since 2021, uh, our government committed to, like we said, $1 billion for a national school food program. It's not done yet. I think we're on the right track. But if my PMB, you know, continue to have, you know, discussion on that and have all those stakeholders making sure that this is not falls into the crack, I think we're on the right track. Look, I've been a member of parliament, like I said, since 2015. I had many ideas of PMB, but as you know, there is a process of you can present the PMB in house. So um, the National School Food Program is not done yet. But what is good about my PMB also is that we had some discussion again around it. And I think our government, like if you look at all the social program that we put in place since 2015, it's a continuation of doing such kind of such program. So uh, I'm very confident that uh, you know, with, with the, the consultation that we had in the past couple of months, like you say, a couple of years, 
on a school food program and the investment that we committed that uh, we're gonna actually you know arrive at a point and have such a program and I I I'm glad that if my PMB will have help in that uh, in creating such a program I think my job as a member of Parliament will be uh, will be done here and uh, you know I'm I'm advocating for that since uh, a couple of years now and uh, with all my colleagues and all those stakeholder group and I think the more uh, you know talk that we have on this is making sure that the government understand that we need such program to Heather Norris. Um, you bring an interesting perspective from the ground of the increase in the number of meals, the increase in the number of schools that are looking for um, uh, such a program from your network. Um, can you break down even further? The federal let's say the federal government follows through on their promise. How does that trickle down to your network? What does it make it easier for you to do or who to hire, et cetera, et cetera? Can you kind of break it down even further? Yeah, thank you for the question. So the work that we do with the school, so our, our staffing complement requires community development coordinators to help work directly with the schools to onboard and get their programs up and running. So when a school applies uh, to be in a program, for example, we need to go in and help them identify a space. We need to help identify the infrastructure needs. So for example, um, they may find a, a small room to use, but they now need a refrigerator. They need a toaster. They need an access to utensils and supplies to actually prepare food. They need to then have staff or volunteers who can commit to delivering a program five days a week. Um, and so there's a lot of work that goes into establishing the program. They need safe food handling. So the largest portion of the funding always supports nutrition. So with the nutrition needs for every program, whether it's a breakfast or a snack program, we have to offer at least three of the food groups and there has to be choice. We have to look at uh, different, you know, cultural uh, food groups depending on the schools. So there's quite a bit of work that goes in behind the scenes. So obviously staffing and resourcing is important to keep up with introducing and onboarding new schools to the program, um, working with the schools on the infrastructure, um, maintaining the funding for the food. So as you can imagine, during COVID, as we came off of COVID and the schools uh, reopened, we went to pre-portioned, single-serve, pre-packaged food extremely costly, not great for waste and the environment. And so we're working with the schools now to try to move them away from these grab and go food items. But to support that, it, it requires um, additional funding for the nutritious food and additional resources and infrastructure to really be able to support and enable the schools to offer um, a program to their, to their student population. Going back to your numbers, you said something started, I think you had three schools in the program and now you've got an extra nine to ten applications. Um, are you actually going to have to say no to schools? So schools apply to be onboarded into the program. So pre-COVID, we used to onboard about two schools that applied each year. And uh, now we're getting upwards of eight to 10 applications each year. We have up until now successfully been meeting the need, but we do have to segment them throughout the year. So we don't have the physical resourcing and capacity and funding to onboard 10 schools in September. So we onboarded some in the fall. We onboarded some in January into the second half of the year. So, so far we're meeting the demand, but in large part is because our organization also fundraises. So we need to raise close to a million dollars to run this program. So we continue to fundraise to also support keeping up with the need and the demand in the schools. But the reality is the schools work with and run a program within the financial resourcing that we're able to send out. So if we, ha if we don't have enough money, then they're receiving less money and they have to allocate it appropriately to support the nutrition needs of their students. Thank you. This is all time we have. This concludes the press conference. Thank you.